Today's topic is Object Oriented Programming versus Procedural Program. Let's start. Now, firstly, the question is what is programming? Programming is a creative process carried out by a programmer to instruct a computer on how to do a task. There are some terms. Programming is a creative process. When a problem is given, we have to think about that problem creatively. How the solution of this problem can be designed. Next, carried out by a programmer. A pro person who is doing that creative process of programming is known as programmer. And via programs, he or she is instructing the computer to do a particular task. That is, we are doing programming in a language which the computer can understand or we have to make the computer understand that language. There are various types of languages like C, C++, Java, Python, Fortran, Cobol, Pascal, etc, etc, etc. Now, these programmings are based on some approaches of programming known as programming paradigm. Programming paradigm is a way to do programming. Some of the languages are based on multiple paradigms. Some are based on a single paradigm. But two most important programming paradigms are procedural programming and object-oriented programming. In procedure oriented programming or procedural paradigm, the main emphasis is on procedure. It consists of a list of instructions organized in groups and those groups are known as functions. For example, in the figure shown, there is a main program, main function and other than this main function, there are various functions named as function 1, function 2, function 3, function 4, function 5 and these functions are associated with each other. So, the whole program is a combination of functions. When the main emphasis is on functions or processor, then a very less attention is given to the data. Data is used by various functions. So, a lot of data items are placed global. Here global means that data can be accessed by any of the function in the class, uh, in the program, sorry. But along with that global data, each function or each module can have its local data also. So the local data is only for that function, but the global data can be accessed by any of the function in that program. When data is available globally and all the function in that program can access that global data, so global data is more vulnerable to accidental change. Any of the function can change that data intentionally or unintentionally. One more thing in procedural paradigm or procedure oriented programming is when we are changing the data structure or external data structure, then we have to change all the functions that are using that data structure. Procedural programming or procedure oriented programming doesn't model real world problem. For example, if you are making a library management system, in any of the procedure oriented programming, then we will think in a way that library means issue of book, return of book, issue of research papers, issue of last year question papers, 
means we will make functions to do these particular tasks. But in real world, library means collection of books. Books having title, having author, having number of pages, having cover page, etc, etc, etc. But when we think in procedure oriented programming, we will think in a different manner. We will not think in terms of books. So we can say that procedure oriented programming doesn't model real world problem. Now the second paradigm is object oriented paradigm or the programming based on object oriented paradigm are known as object oriented programming. In object oriented programming, data is our critical entity. That means main emphasis is on data rather than processing. So when main emphasis is on data and data is critical element, then in object oriented programming, we can't allow data to move free. Data is always bounded with the functions which have access to that data. As we have already discussed that each object contains its data and functions together. Only the functions bounded with that data can access the data and objects interact with each other via passing messages. When only the functions which are tied together with that data can access that data, so there is no chance of accidentally changing the data via other functions. Now we can see decomposition of a problem into a number of entities called objects. That is, in object oriented programming, we decompose a problem in number of entities which are known as objects. If we come to our previous example, that is library management system, now, when we make that system in object-oriented programming or we code that system in object-oriented programming, then our main emphasis will be books because the main emphasis is on data and our data is books. So, we will think in terms of books that a book have a title, a book have a author, a book have number of pages, a book belongs to a particular subject and what functions can be applied to a book, a book can be issued, a book can be returned and all that. So problem is decomposed in objects or in terms of data. Now the major differences between procedure oriented programming and object oriented programming the first difference is in processor oriented programming uh, emphasis is, uh, is on processor but in object oriented programming emphasis is on data. Here data is critical entity so we pay more attention to data rather than processor. In processor oriented programming Programs are divided in terms of functions, whereas in object-oriented programming, programs are divided in terms of objects. In procedure-oriented programming, most of the functions share global data, where data can be changed by any of the functions. But in object-oriented programming, functions and the data on which they operate are tied together so that no other function can change the data accidentally. In object oriented programming, data move openly around the system from function to function, whereas in object oriented programming, we use the concept of information hiding or data hiding, so data is hidden and can't be accessed by external functions. Processor oriented programming employs top down approach whereas object oriented programming employs bottom up approach. Examples of pro uh, processor oriented programming are Fortran, COBOL, C, etc. Whereas object oriented programming C++, 
Java, etc.